phrases tossed around quite frequently. I'm not a math person. I'm not a scientist. These phrases are said so often and with such little embarrassment that it seems that our society as a whole just accepts the fact that math and science just isn't for everyone. I mean, people go around boasting this characteristic like it's some type of achievement. But why is that? Why is it okay for people to go around proclaiming their lack of confidence in STEM? The problem is our understanding of STEM literacy. But let's first define what STEM literacy means. If I pull out my phone and Google the term literacy, it spits out the definition that literacy means the ability to read and write. But despite this definition, science literacy does not mean the ability to do science. And math literacy doesn't mean the ability to simply do math. This is the misconception that plagues our society today, that plagues our schools and affects the minds of students. People stigmatize the idea that scientists and mathematicians are these insanely smart people who wear lab coats and glasses, who lock themselves away from all human contact and do their research in their labs. The fact of the matter is that all of us are scientists, and all of us can and should be STEM literate. So then what does STEM literacy mean? Simply put, STEM literacy means that a person is able to ask, find, and determine the answers to questions that just come from their curiosity about things that happen around them. Humans are innately curious beings, so science is what makes us human. We're all born to the scientists. But why does it matter? Why does it matter if an individual exercises their STEM literacy? Well, I'll give you three reasons. Number one, STEM literacy is crucial to being a fully informed citizen. With new developments in science and technology raising issues for public debate, a public that's more STEM literate is better able to make informed judgments. So voting about driverless cars, funding for space exploration, regulations on GMOs, these national and global issues depend upon a public that is STEM literate. Number two takes this to a more personal level. STEM literacy drives our day-to-day -day decisions. So when you're at the grocery store deciding between different produce options, organic versus non-organic, when you're deciding whether or not to go to the doctor when you think you might be sick, or whether or not to get the latest vaccine, an individual's capacity for STEM literacy drives their decisions on a daily basis. Number three is jobs. In today's society, we're seeing more and more jobs being created in the STEM field. And even if your profession doesn't fall under science, technology, engineering, and math, the skills acquired from being STEM literate aid an individual regardless of their prospective profession. So why does it matter? Why has this become a problem in the first place? Well, the issue comes down to our K-12 STEM education system, a flawed system that incorrectly prepares students to memorize and regurgitate information rather than developing skills such as skepticism and critical thinking. So imagine yourself in the shoes of a student. You sit through weeks of lectures and you sit down to take a multiple choice test that supposedly assesses your knowledge as a science student. Well, if you're given a multiple choice question with four options, well, you know that one of those four options has to be true. So you sift through your mind looking for keywords that pop at you, and you come to your answer. The problem with multiple choice questions is that there's always a right answer. But that isn't real science. That isn't what happens in the real world. These assessments then go on to determine who succeeds as a scientist. It sifts through students, predetermining their career options. So say you got a C in biology, well, you can't be a scientist then, right? Too many students
students point at STEM because they don't think they're smart enough. In essence, the K-12 STEM education system gives students a false impression about what STEM jobs look like by improperly assessing their skills and by not teaching them to think critically enough. When you solve this problem, well, there you go. You have STEM literacy and STEM retention. But how do you fix it? The golden question. Well, for the past few months, I've been leading Project Best, Building Excitement for Science and Technology, an initiative that promotes curiosity in the sciences for middle school students. I design a lesson, go to middle schools twice a month, and work with their students. During one of our lessons, I introduced a chemistry topic with a fun little demonstration. I mean, what better way to grab the attention of a 12-year-old than by exploding foam out of an oversized flask? After I did the demonstration, I taught them the chemistry topics behind it. I then gave them the procedure for the next experiment, split them up into groups, and had them predict what might happen next. After 20 minutes of deliberation, each group had reasoned a prediction. Afterwards, we conducted the experiment and evaluated the accuracy of every group's, of every group's prediction. These students were able to accurately predict what would happen in a chemical demonstration without knowing the complex topics behind it. In my experience through Project Best, STEM literacy is made possible through interactive model-based teaching and positive reinforcement. Through this approach to teaching, not only are we giving these students a better perspective about STEM, but we're also showing them that STEM is reliant on trial and error. It's okay to make mistakes when you're doing science. Just last week, I went to these middle schools and I had them step into the shoes of a forensic scientist as they try to analyze evidence and figure out who committed a crime. These students, despite the trial and error nature of the activity, were able to overcome any failure that they were faced with. They were able to embrace that failure and were driven to solve the puzzles. For high school students like us, CAPS fills this need for model-based learning. In my own project, I work to study the signaling pathways that drive liver fibrosis, a disease that affects hundreds of thousands of people all around the world. I work with a mentor down at KU Medical Center, and my experience this past year has put my textbook learning into a real-world context. It's given me a real perspective about what a STEM job looks like. I have peers who partner with businesses and propose new models and programs to help fix problems that that business might have, who analyze customer service, who analyze social media to help these businesses succeed. Every student at CAPS is given the ability to identify a societal problem and work to find a solution. The scientific process at its finest. Every student at CAPS is given the opportunity to take control of their education. Students at CAPS define what they learn and how they learn it through their projects. Now the challenge I leave everyone with today is to strive to be scientifically conscious every day because everyone is a scientist. Thank you.